Hey everybody, uh, Liam here. Just doing a little impromptu vlog about Dororo because I finished it today, the 2019 Dororo, and I really wanted to talk about it just a little bit. This isn't going to be too long, just to give my overall thoughts. Um, it is honestly probably one of my favorite anime of the past five years. I am genuinely surprised how good it all came together. Because I remember watching a little bit of the original from the 60s, um, which is closer to the manga, or at least what Tezuka kind of was doing, and um, I, I instantly loved the premise. I thought it was super cool, and I was really excited when I found out that they were making this one, especially MAPPA, who I'm a big fan of. I really liked uh, what they did with the first Garo season, um, and I knew that they were going to be a good, uh, good production company to do this. Um, one thing that I was surprised about was how deep it got. Because I, as I was watching it, I noticed how much of a central theme of, like, desperation drives people. And that's kind of what the th central theme of the whole thing was. And I, I really enjoyed that. And, um, yeah, it, it, it was it really fascinated me how much each of the characters sort of fell into that sort of category because you've got the main bad guy. You've got Daigo who, in this version of the story, his motivation... While his motivation is greed, um, they, they sort of change around how evil he actually is because it, it's really clever how they... With one little change, it makes him so much less... like nefariously motivated than he was in the original story by making it that he was willing to give the demons anything rather than just giving up his firstborn child it sh it, it created this di like almost a completely different character that being said Daigo was still clearly evil um, but it helped create a conflict for the entire show because you've got Tohomaru and Lady Nui who you know feel as though that it's feel as though it's important to follow Daigo in a way that none of the other characters do and sort of exploring the idea of just how like how desperation can motivate someone because on the opposite spectrum you've got a protagonist with the exact same problem you've got Hyakimaru who as a character he's desperate to get his pieces back not so much at first um, although I think that's more due to the idea that he can't express emotion up until he gets like his central nervous system and just like the, the idea of how connected he becomes with Dororo as a character to where I should probably say I'm going into spoilers at this point where she is super like important to him, how much, how much she means to him. And she is almost like a piece that he is missing when she is separated from him. And I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, like, I wanted to say something. I know that they added a few things. Like, I know the the whole the female demon that falls in love with the human man. I th I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't in the manga. And I think they added that to sort of create sort of the idea that evenly good or not, black and white. There, there is some gray area there and your origins don't necessarily determine like who you are as a person and I, I think that was sort of a central thing and you, you've got that with um, oh god I've completely forgotten his name okay so his name is Jukai um, you've got Jukai who is trying to do the right thing um, because he feels as though it's his duty to do so and that, that kind of weighs over to Dororo as a character as well because you've got her who she's been dealing with tragedy almost her entire life. She's She comes from bandits and her mother and father were pretty heroic bandits. They were, they were pretty strong-willed and especially when you get into Dororo's backstory when she was with her mother before her mother died. Um, and the fact that she's basically had all this bad luck on her and she's basically had to make it on her own in spite of the fact that she's almost like thief royalty in a way, which I really enjoyed. And ultimately, 
the animation is just fantastic as well. I know there were a couple episodes where they focused a lot more on squash and stretch, where they, they tried to make it more animatable than other times, and I, I get that. That didn't bother me, although I, I could tell that's what they were doing. Um, but honestly, I, I know, like, One Punch Man, at least season one of One Punch Man is, like, the, the gold standard for television animation these days, but I... I did not expect, like, how, like, fluid the animation was going to be. The fight scenes were actually fun to watch. And it's it's hard to, it, it's weird to say, but it's very rare these days to get f- fight scenes that are actually fun to watch in anime. And I don't know how big of a budget it was. It might have just been a normal budget and MAPPA is just that good at, like, at, like, utilizing their budget. Um... But it was really nice to watch. Uh, I'm not. I didn't really have many complaints. Maybe uh, Daigo could have been explored a little more as a character, but I almost think it worked better with him as kind of like this phantom overlord, in the sense of like his his actions affect at all the important characters, and he's just kind of there. And I. And, like, Tohomaru is almost the more the main antagonist of the story. And the fact that his progression into how he starts to understand his father's motivations. And a lot of Tohomaru's motivation comes from his desire to please his father. Uh, Because he's a boy who basically has everything except for his father and mother's love. And you've got Nui, who kind of comes into her own as a character by the end. Um, The use of colors was really nice, too. I just really liked how kind of bleak and and like how turned down the contrast was um which is another thing you don't often see a lot in anime these days everything is kind of high contrast uh i'm gonna wrap it up because all i want to say is if you have legal means to watch this please do because i'm scared it's gonna get lost in the ether Um, and it really doesn't deserve to be, it's, it was a creation by the godfather of anime and manga, and it's one of his coolest creations, and it influenced a lot of people, like Hirohiko Araki, I don't know for sure, but it, it feels like there was a lot of stuff in there that influenced Berserk, um, and I, I just, it's so good on its own, even if it wasn't important, it's still just a well-made show all around, and the story is just so well fleshed out, and the animation is so good, and I I, I just, I really want people to be able to watch it, and I, I think even if you're not a fan of old stuff, you'll really enjoy it. So, that's my thoughts. Take care, and stay classic. <laughs>